Uh, making her debut equipped coming up very soon. Show, showing the uh, showing her old gear status. It'll be be fun watching her lift first time equipment to meet. And it's gonna be fun seeing Tracy lift doing her first meet, which she first could have a ever. very good meet. Yeah, it's she's out of this world. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. So we got quite a few questions tonight. We're gonna start off talking about a controversial uh, subject, which is the deload. And I wrote an article a little over two years ago. May of 2014 or June, June of 2014. I actually shared it today. And it basically says, why so much hate for the D-load and why you should embrace it? Okay. D-load. People have different definitions of what a D-load actually is. A D-load is not an off week. The way we advocate it, 1020 Life Philosophy, is it's a lighter week at about 50 or 60%, around a 5 or 6 RPE, Singles, usually, for me, it's always singles. For my clients, it's typically singles. But again, it's a philosophy. You make it your own. But you do this to not only give your mind a break, your body a break, but you use it to hone in and dial in your form with the lighter weights. And it should be a refreshing week for a lot of people because in the 1020 Life system, we have three, three waves. Two on, one down, two on, one down, two on, one down peak. Okay? So... There's many different methods of training that will work for people. But in my opinion, in my experience, again, I have a full website of people that are, um, they're, they're benefiters of the, of the yep. system, right? Yeah. Um, and I've coached a lot of people in my former sponsored system or website that utilized my system before it actually had a name. And it just flat out works. Whether you like it or not, it works. Any smart, intelligent, well put together training system will have days that are lighter. Whether you want to call them deloads or unloads or reloads, nothing is linear. If you just keep adding weight all the time, no matter how intelligent or how precisely put together your training plan is, after time, it will not work for you anymore. Just loading more and more weight on the bar each week does not work. Let's not even talk about the cumulative trauma that we do and we put on our bodies, okay? We know that a training cycle is gonna be heavy and it's not gonna be good for you in a lot of ways. So why not, even if you don't believe in it? We're not even talking about CNS overstimulation yet where you're shaking all over the place, yeah. you don't sleep, you know, everything feels like a ton. Why not back off before you're absolutely forced to? Think of changing your oil in your car, again, these are poor analogies, but you'll get my drift. You don't wait to change the oil in your car till after your head gasket blows. You do maintenance. Think of a deload as just a lighter week where you do routine maintenance. Can you skip a deload every once in a while? Sure. Yeah. You can skip a deload. Okay. Should you never consider implementing one because you think it's stupid? I think that idea is stupid. See, that, that's where my problem lies. Most experts that you hear that really know what they're talking about, they'll never say never. And what do you have to say about it? Not going back. It's, it's the, the concept that deloading is dumb and it makes you not tough. Makes you a pussy. Hardcore. Like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Like, the people that are telling you that are the most hurt people in powerlifting history. Yeah. Like, I mean, and I used to be that guy. I used to be the guy that would come in and push it to the limit every week. Shit starts blowing off the bunny. You got to find a smarter way to do things. Guess what's smarter? Having a plan. Yep. Having a deload. Call it what you want to. You want to give it a different name? That's fine. I really don't give a shit. Yeah. But this whole idea that you're not hardcore because you deload. Well, some people still are, are deniers that CNS, overstimulation, overtraining, whatever you want to call it, exists. Yeah. They think that you can just train through it. And yes, the body does adapt. And yes, some people can train forever without taking deloads. But where are these people at now is what you have to ask yourself. Just like Dave Tate's six questions about what you want to ask concerning your guru, where are they at now? How good do they lift? Who have they coached? And it goes on and on and on. You have to ask yourself these questions, not just their social media following, not just what's behind their name, but what have they actually done and who have they actually coached is what you have to ask yourself. Many systems work out there. You don't have to ask yourself, who is Louis Simmons coach? You know, <laughs> because they're the best of the best. Who is Rick Hussey coach? You know, because they're the best of the best. Most major successful systems have implemented deloads. Yeah. 531, Josh Bryan's training system. I trained with Josh Bryan. We had a deload every four weeks. Okay? 
So it wasn't every three weeks, which we're fine with that. But yeah. you need to have a deload somewhere. We're, we're talking about the actual idea, the being smart enough to take downtime. You don't have to agree with us that every third week is it's what we do. It works well for us. It works great for our clients. It's proven to be successful. But if you think the concept of not having a deload is just dumb, then you really need to evaluate what you know about training. Yeah. What else do you have to say about that? You know, I just, I get a laugh from the irony of the people telling you that deloading is dumb and that you can just train through it are so injured all the time, who can't successfully compete anymore, who haven't been able to compete anymore, and were never really all that damn strong in the first place. Like, I mean, not everybody's going to be a top tier lifter. I don't pretend like I'm the best lifter in the world. I'm not even close to it. But the reality is I couldn't be training anymore. I couldn't be competing anymore. If it weren't for deal. And when you were at your most hurt, your best total was 2325, right? 2381. 2381. Yep. And since then, at 320 pounds, you know, cutting. That's as far as he got while training the way yep. that he wanted to train without deloads, being bullheaded, pushing through no matter what. Yep. Since then, he's training less. He's in a lighter weight class and he's told 120, 119 pounds more yep. since with a half a peck. Yeah. With the adductor torn off, with a bicep half torn off. And did that at the Arnold, the you know, hardest probably meet that I'm going to be able to find to do. Right. You know what I mean? It's not like you did it at, did it at a local meet. You yeah. Know? I mean, it, it's it's proven its benefits to me. It's proven its benefits to my clients. Mm. I mean, it's... Well, everyone on the website and every one of our clients, again, you've got to ask yourself, are you training? Do you want to train all the time and not take a deload for, for what reason? Is it because you love training so much that you're going to go psychotic if you don't have enough an outlet? Well, that's not the case. You're still going to train. People, once again, have this idea of a deload is you go on there and, and hop, skip around and, and, and play touch butt with your friends and go home. That's not what it's about. It's a building block for the next week is what it comes down to. Yeah. It's a way to get fresh mentally and physically, refine your form, and then propel yourself to the next week, especially if you're in pre-contest. Training. Correct. And we have a whole host of people that didn't really buy into it until they tried it. Yeah. So you've got to ask yourself, what is the end result you're looking for? Are you trying to just feel good week to week by training and not ever taking a break? Or are you looking at the big picture and when you're done, do you want to be somewhat in one piece? Do you want to know that you've went into your sessions rested and recovered and maximize your time in powerlifting? I'm not saying that you don't need to train hard, but training smart and intelligently, in most cases that I've seen, should include lighter weeks every once in a while, yeah. no matter what you want to call it. You know, we're playing semantics at this point, but, but lighter weeks should be a part. You, you should just be able to train through that, man. You should, you know, more more rest and recovery. That's all we ever did. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah, I, I don't really agree with that. And uh, people are, you know, they're entitled to their opinion about how to train and everything, but you got to look at what kind of a lifter were they? What kind of a coach are they? You've got to ask yourself this. And again, it's not about how dramatic they're saying it or how nonchalant they're saying it. Look at the results, the proofs in the pudding. Yeah. There's many different ways to train. Deload is just one of the tools in your toolbox, just like speed work, just like different, you know, recovery tools. Yeah. There are things you utilize, and to say that that is stupid without any kind of context is actually stupid. Um, what's that? We got a few questions here. Yeah, you want to look at some of them? Let's yeah. Uh, good core, core work exercises and how often? That's an easy one. You want to go ahead and jump that one? Yeah, good core work exercises, McGill Big Three, Stir the Pot, different versions of side bridges and planks. Uh, Miguel Big Three is a bird dog, the roll to side plank, and the uh, Miguel curl up. Um, those are the, the, the four best that, that I could name uh, for you, and, and I utilize them weekly. Um, <laughs> we sold out of shirts. Yeah. <laughs> no, no shirts sold out. We're all at the Fit Expo for, for this weekend. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to the SoFit Expo to, to, to move them out. Now, I can talk with authority on why deloads are important because most of you know that I really hurt my back a few years back. And 
the injury actually brought me full circle, getting to know Dr. McGill, applying a lot of his things that, that he's taught me. And one of those is being an athlete 24 seven. And a lot of people scoff at that as well, just like the deloads in phases of your training. They scoff at it, say, oh, it doesn't matter what you're doing outside of the gym. It doesn't matter how you move. It doesn't matter if you deload. Well, again, ask yourself, who are these people saying it? What have they done? Who have they coached? What kind of shape are they in right now? I'm pain free day to day. I don't know about you. Um, and I'm lifting at my best. Now, this back issue that I had did bring to my attention that I was pushing too hard. I wasn't true to my deloads a lot of the time. And I wasn't an athlete 24 7. So you're not going to be able to tell me no matter what that this doesn't work because I've seen it in myself. I've seen the research behind it. A lot of the stuff that, that I've known instinctively has been corroborated with, with some of McGill's research and science and we see people like yourself, yeah. like Lisa, like Chad Walker, like Clint Smith, like Beth Thomas. I mean, we could go on and on with people that have been hurt at times, a lot of them, and hit bigger totals when they started training smarter no. and less aggressive. It's more, more, effect, more effective training. It's not necessarily about being harder, you know, doing more work, yeah. more capacity. It's about doing the right things and the right timing. Yeah. And it's about developing an intelligent program around it smart system right that incorporates deloads yeah or lighter weeks less intensity however you want to call it we call it deloads and we're very specific yes we're very specific with our things they don't have to be so specific for you but at least we are being specific about what we mean and not just saying something's dumb yeah i mean you don't hear us bashing other methods and telling you that you know there's lots of ways to get strong hell i got pretty strong every deload for a while there yeah then after a while it didn't work anymore You'll hit that brick wall like I did, and you'll have to reevaluate. And if you're lucky, you can still lift. If you're not, you'll be sitting on the sideline forming opinions. Yeah. Telling everybody about how hardcore you were. Yeah. Okay, we got some bear love. <laughs> Brian, are you attending the Olympia? I will not be at the Olympia. All right. When do you when when do you think the best time to test your max coming up to a competition? You test your max on the platform. That yep. is the only place. You should not miss lifts in training. Nope. You should maybe push it once when you're attempting a third attempt with maybe a band or, or maybe around a third attempt in training one time or so. But if you've read the, the 1020 Life book, we, we kind of lay out the peaking phase, which includes deloads, oddly enough. And... It propels you forward by not pushing too hard too early and peaking the only time it counts, and that's a meet. Yeah. The only time it matters is what you put together on the platform. Yeah. Okay. What are were the pros before you inspired you to look more into the D-Load type training, or did you simply go off your own experience and experiment with clients? So what brought you to, to being able to, to determine, okay, this is when the D-Load would fit? What made you put the D-Loads where you did? A few, a few different reasons. One... Pushing hard for a long time, having bad meets here and there, getting really beat up and getting injured. And then most importantly, my back situation. You, you just can't push that hard for that long. I've been squatting over a thousand pounds in competition for over 10 years in a row now. Not many people can say that, that are still around and lifting. So I realized that I have to be a little more conservative and decide when I wanted to push it, when I wanted to pull back. And having that every third week deload where I can regroup, refine my form, Unload my spine a little bit because, again, cumulative trauma to your spine and to your joints over time will lead to something breaking. It's just how it works. It's maybe sooner, maybe later. It was easy for me to jump on board with deloading the way that we do and how we do it because I've got 14 staple scar marks on my pec that I don't think would be there if I had enough common sense to deload often. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Even if, even if, <laughs> even if people think deloading is stupid and they don't need to do it, why wouldn't you want to give your body a little more recovery? Who cares how many weeks or how many days in the year you're training? If you're making, if you're, if you're being successful and you're making progress, what does it matter? You want to do as little as possible to continue making progress. You don't want to do as much as possible and then see if it sticks to the wall and say, okay, well that didn't work or that worked. You don't even know what worked. A lot of the time it's going to be somewhere in the middle. Just like sometimes and maybe. It's never yes or no for a lot of things. And, uh, you know, just to throw something out and say it, it's dumb when you haven't even done it yourself is dumb. I don't, I don't know how else to put that. 
when, when you're full of injury-plagued uh, lifting career, 